group. And it's not even a monthly service fee increase announcement. Look at that. <laughs> Surprise. Boo. Did you want, did you want an increase? No? Um, okay. Well, good afternoon and welcome. Thank you. I see some of my uh, fellow birthday uh, luncheon people here uh, that I just had. Uh, lunch with, so that was that was very nice. Um, thank you. So we are going to dive right in. Uh, Jill is not here yet, so we'll go ahead and dive right in. And do we have a, a, a hand mic um, pile that we can give? <laughs> he's like, he's good, right? <laughs> He's almost as good as Audra, right? Yeah. <laughs> almost. Boo. All right. Uh, Jason, you want to kick us off with... Uh... Oh, there's Audra. <laughs> All right. So um, were you going to do Water's Edge Employee of the Month? Okay. Well, we'll just keep this, we'll just keep this moving and we'll have Aaron... And while you're up there, do you want to just give your Water's Edge update as well? Sure. Okay. All right. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Oh, next one. There we go. So our employee of the month over in Water's Edge is Jean-Claude um, Prenelis. I'm hoping I pronounced that right. I tend to mess up the last name pronunciation for him. And what's really interesting is he is a referral to us from last month's employee of the month. So we really like it when we get referrals from our outstanding individuals because we tend to know we're going to get another outstanding individual. Um, but he is one of our full-time CNAs. He's been, been with us for a little bit over a year and primarily works during the day, seven to three. He was nominated this month. Uh, well, I put his name out there, but he was the name came to me from some wonderful feedback from residents who have actually asked, could we please get him up there as employee of the month? He does a great job. He's very consistent, always smiling. Um, so, you know, it does go uh, to show how much influence you, you have on these nominations. When you see other shining stars, please share it. Um, you will typically see him down the Magnolia hallway, um, he's just a wonderful presence and really a great guy. Um, so go tell him how much you appreciate his hard work when you um, are over there. But that is our employee of the month, John Glad. So, okay. um, Water's Edge has a lot going on. We did have Aka in um, last. Thursday, I believe it was. Does that sound right, Sean? Last Thursday? When were you gone? I was dealing with the surveyor here at the same time Sean was dealing with the surveyors over in um, Naples. Naples. Yes. So, but they came in and I wish Maureen were here. I did um, try to pull her away from the training for a brief period of time, but we're, we're knee deep in um, some training that I'll talk about. Um, but they came in and we did clear our tags as we expected to. But uh, one thing that is really, I find, different this year than the prior surveys that I've had here, and it was really a testament to Maureen, is they came in and we were able to have them cleared and out of our building in less than two hours. And that goes to a testament to her. This is the first year I told Sean when he came back. This is the first year where, truthfully, I myself did not have to write the plan of correction, did not have to organize the, um, the book that we get ready for them, because she really took charge with that. And usually I'm doing that um, because my DON is well or not. Um, it's just they're out there and they're on the floor, which is great. And I'm not discounting that. But she was much more of hands on with it than I've had ever in the experience. And we got them in and out in two years. She had everything very systematic, ready to go. Um, they only had to go in and look at one little thing on the floor because she had 
boom, boom, boom. Here you go, here you go. And it was just wonderful. Um, so when you see Maureen around, please tell her thank you. We know what a great job she's doing um, because it just, I, it, it amazed me. I was just shocked when I heard, oh, they've already left and everything's cleared. Not that I didn't expect us to clear. Just thought it'd be a little bit more intensive than that. So it was wonderful. Um, she is not here because, as I said, I would talk about training. We are in the process of transitioning to our electronic medical records with PCC. And so we have very intensive training ongoing right now. Um, I've been in it as well. However, because it's much more of a clinical focus today, I was able to pull myself away a little bit, but she's still in there. Um, they're actively getting order sets for the nurses that are out there. Um, put in and set up so that it's ready to go when we uh, transfer over. So that is happening. Um, it will continue to happen in various forms throughout the month of April. And then we make the full transition in May. Um, our assisted living will also go to electronic records at that point in time too, because currently they are still on paper charts. So they're going through all of the training as well. It's a big, big project, um, but we're very excited for it. I did follow up and ask about the patient portal. Somebody had asked about that. So they're for independent living. And I, I want to tell you that I just, I don't know yet. Um, PCC is going to have a capability, point click care, by the way, is what that stands for, if you're curious, where you will have patient portals set up in it, similar like you do with Epic MyChart. Um, through the hospital systems, and we'll be able to go in and view the records that are in there. I know that that's going to be set up for the health center. Um, someone asked if that would also be available in independent living. They're looking into that. So I did ask. We don't know for sure. Um, however, remember in independent living, the amount of records that we do keep are minimal, like the basics. So we have history and stuff and is very dependent on what you bring to us, to the AIL office, because it would be their records. It's not the clinic, it would be the AIL records. So even if we do get that patient portal set up, you're probably not gonna find a huge extensive medical information in there. Um, but you may have the ability to then like update demographic information and stuff like that through it to us. So I, I am trying to get more information on it. Um, but that is to come and we are excited about that as well, um, having that capability. And then the final thing I have really to report on this month is the ongoing refreshing of Water's Edge. The bathrooms are finishing up this week and then they will be done um, again, we're finalizing the dining room furniture um, information, and then at the end of next week, I will be meeting with the design committee, and I have some samples of some fabrics and um, some ideas of what um, I would like their assistance with, and we will get moving on plans for the common area and the entryway of Water's Edge to get that more welcoming and, and uh presentable. So I'm um, very excited by those changes. And that's what I have going on in Water's Edge right now. And we remain um, five stars. Yes, we remain five stars. <laughs> Sorry, um, I tend to update as we change. Okay. And hope I, hopefully I will not have to say that we've changed that in a very long time, because we're very happy with our five stars. So any questions? Yes. in the health center because you're not our residents. Yep. So, so let me just talk, uh, we talked about this in the healthcare committee. So what Mrs. Uttermark is saying right. is um, why can't all of you have a separate record on the independent living side in the new electronic health record? Actually, I think that is the goal because right Correct. now in Mary's office, she has two filing cabinets with folders for each of you. And eventually the goal is, is to get that all electronic, you know, electric, um, electronic for you. Yeah, that it will be coming down the road. Um, 
just like as I said, though, the, um, the amount of records and the information that we have on it from an independent standpoint compared to those in the health center is much smaller. Um, you know, we'll have what you get at the beginning and then basically, yes, if you're being seen um, or there's updates from the nurse. So I, I was talking in relation to specifically to that patient portal, if it's active with the independent, which I do think it will be over time to just know the amount of information that may be in there might be a little bit more limited than what you would find in a health center person. Um, but yes, eventually the goal is that the records that um, Mary's office keeps would get into that system. We're just, that's kind of like the next step. Um, it's not the initial one, whereas the health center will be moving forward with that now. And, and how I envision this, and we talked about this in the healthcare committee meeting, is down the road, what we would really like to see is instead of grabbing the folder, your folder from Water's Edge and taking it with them to your apartment, they would grab a tablet and they would have the tablet and all of your information that you've provided us would be in this tablet and then they could also start their incident reporting process right there um, on the spot. So more to come on that, like Aaron said, the priority right now um, is, is Water's Edge Assisted Living and Skilled and then we'll move uh, further down that line. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. Well, thank you, Aaron. All right. Thank yeah. you. I just have to say that uh, last week um, when I was at the Arlington, we were going through our resurvey at the Arlington, and it was it was just a horrific experience. And um, so I, I so I left to go do that, and Erin texts me, and she said, "We have survey here too." And not for one second did I question whether or not we would pass. Uh, with Aaron and Maureen um, and their team at the helm there. So congratulations. It's very, it's, it's very nerve wracking. It is our scorecard. It's, uh, you know, we kind of live year to year. Liz, I know that you used to be in home care and, and it can be really, really, uh, really daunting. Um, so anyways, congratulations on that. And then Jason, would you like to come up and introduce Although she probably needs no introduction, right? So, the point of the month on IL side is Anna Fabian. So, our employee month on IL side is Anna Fabian. She was just recently promoted to lead server. Um, as you can see around um, the dining room, she has a smile on her face all the time. This loves our residents. Um, loves coming in every day. Says she's um, also looking to get a scholarship, so hopefully we'll Gracious enough to get her one. Um, she wants to be an esthetician and go into school for radiology. So um, she has a bright future ahead of her. As I said, her first job, and she's doing great, still in high school and able to, to juggle both a full time job and a full time school. school. Anna's a little shy in front of people, so um, you can thank her around the dining room when you see her. Hello, everyone. <laughs> uh, so I want to say um, I'm grateful for being Employee of the Month and for getting a promotion to be becoming a lead server down in here at San Hill. And um, I'm glad to, uh, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm always happy and excited to see all of y'all come into dining room and serve y'all with pleasure and give my best of my ability to when it comes down to serving you all. Um, I just want to say thank you. I'm really grateful for this opportunity, for both opportunities, and I hope to be here for a while. <laughs> Good job. I don't know that I could have ever done that at that age, so. Good job. I did take many, many courses to do that. So, okay. Um, we have PS Salon here. 
They are our salon provider, and they are going to come up and just, um, I gave them a uh, little bit of time on the floor here because we have a new stylist, and so um, would you like to yeah, go sure. ahead and do the introductions? And Hello, everyone. I am Brooke Johnson. I am the district leader for PS Salon and Spa. I oversee all of Southeast Florida. Um, I'm originally from Maryland. I just moved here two weeks ago, so I'm getting to know Florida very well, and I'm loving it. Um, PS Salon and Spa, just a little bit about us. We only run in senior living communities. We're a nationwide company running in about 1,600 locations now. So this is all that we do. Um, we have a new stylist, and we are running Wednesday through Friday here, correct? Yep. Um, so... We'd love to see you in the salon. If you aren't using our salon services, um, reach out to me and let me know why, and we would love to fix those issues for you. Um, anything that you want to add? We just had a brief little moment, so <laughs> if you have any questions for me, we could do a quick Q&A, or yeah, do you have yeah, something? Yeah, why don't you, can you just um, run down um, the list? Of, first of all, I've heard great things about you. Oh, good. I have ladies <laughs> stopping me in the hallway saying, you know what? She's really good. I like the way she does my hair. So um, we're trying to clone her, but it hasn't been working so far. Yeah. So why don't you just kind of high level sure. bullet point what types of services you provide sure. in the salon? Yeah. So we do all hair services. Services, um, men's cuts, women's cuts, uh, clip, clipper cut, perm, color, styles, blow dry, um, and then all nail services. So pedicures, manicures. Um, sh is she doing dip or just gel? Just gel and basic manicures um, and then pedicure. We have a, a beautiful pedicure area. So um, you guys could definitely utilize that. That's pretty. Okay. And so since you're the stylist and it's very personal why don't can can you just uh what did you do before you came to sand hill cove <laughs> yeah okay so i've been a stylist for 30 years and um before that i worked for a, a company very similar to ps salon i was a hairdresser with them for four years and then i became their district leader as well um, only because I loved, you know, just um, basically the the concept and what was being offered. So I wanted to not only be in one salon, but I wanted to basically advocate in in all the area that was given to me. So, but um, I ended up it was a little too much for my health and just you know for me personally. So I took a step back down and. Um, it was great because then our district, our regional manager reached out to me and um, basically there was an offer. A lot of you knew Michelle and she retired and I took her place. Um, I couldn't fill her shoes, I'm sure, but, I, you know, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> but, um, you know, I just basically um, did that where I came from before. So I do have many years of hairdressing experience. I have a young son who's a hairdresser now as well. So, <laughs> so that's where I'm. My name is Shiara. 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 Yes. So you notice how I didn't pronounce it because I knew I was going to screw it up. And I'm usually really good with names. So sorry. So Shiara. 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 Correct. So okay. that's, you know, where I, and I, I'm, I just, basically do all the hair um, services for you guys. Good. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you guys. Have a good afternoon. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. I think Jane Reynolds is up next. Hello. Can you hear me? Is this close enough? Yes. Yes. Hi. Hi, Jane. Hi, Sean. So as I look out into, oh, I need the uh, clicker. Is it here? Oh, thank you. Okay. So I'm excited when I look out here, I see just about everybody in this room is involved in wellness. So yes. So I'm here to tell you about our wellness programs um, and just re-familiarize you with what we have to offer. Of course, this is your NIF staff, the National Institute of Fitness and Sports, you have Jane Reynolds as the wellness coordinator and Marsha Mattathia as the health fitness specialist. Thanks. <laughs> I can't believe I've been here almost four years. 
in this position in May will be four years. That's crazy. So just a little bit about NIFS. It's the National Institute of Fitness and Sports. Uh, they're headquartered in Indianapolis. So they had that full eclipse yesterday. Um, NIFS provides staffing, provides wellness programming. So all the wonderful programs that we have come from NIFS. We get to fine tune them and kind of customize them. And we also come up with our own original programming. Um, NIFS has the active aging division. Um, they have 22 senior living communities at this time. They're still adding more. Um, and 12 of them are LCS communities. And they also have that corporate division where they uh, service eight uh, different sites. So as you know, we have a lot of different services. We have group classes every week from Tai Chi to balance to yoga to cardio. Um, we have the Jumpstart program, which I really encourage everybody to um, take part in. It's a one-on-one -on -one senior fitness evaluation. And then we try to re we try to grab you and do it in an another eight weeks to see if there's any kind of changes. We always offer exercise prescriptions. If you ever want a new workout in the gym, come see us, and we will um, come up with a nice workout for you. And exercise consultations, just little like, quickie, like, hey, can you help me with this equipment? Can you figure out this? Am I doing this right? And then, of course, personal training. Um, we have group exercise classes, and this is one of the balance classes. I know Marsha gave me a new picture, but I didn't put it up yet. But she always has a full group, and they're always happy, and it's like a party, a balance party. Um, this is just a little snapshot of our group exercise schedule. We have them at the uh, wellness desk. They're on Care Merge. Um, I think they're even on channel 63. So this is the group's class. Now I wanted to just kind of introduce you to our specialty instructors. Um, we have Rita Gilbert who teaches our chair yoga every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And we're probably gonna be adding a um, Pilates class with her very soon. Um, we have Pat Lawson who's our master Tai Chi instructor. So um, and she's actually gonna be here tomorrow to teach her class. And you know, she's a fantastic instructor. She's, she's the one that teaches teachers internationally. So we are so lucky to have her here. And then Nancy Howard is the other Tai Chi instructor who Pat taught. So they both teach the same um, style. And she's fantastic. She's here on Tuesdays. And then Rose Bell is kind of like my go-to when I need help, she teaches a little aquatics. She can fill in if we need a substitute. And she's just a, you know, we go way back. So she's a great gal. Um, one of the things that we have to, that's required, and I know y'all, when you first move in here, there's a lot of things that you're filling out. We have our things too. <laughs> so we, we require as part, to be part of the fitness center, the pool, the classes, that you um, fill out paperwork with a medical history and a waiver of liability. Um, we have everything you need. Marsha stays on top of that. How many of you just had to fill out again? Yeah. Every three years we have to do that. So we have a database that we stay up on top of. And I know it's you know, kind of a little bit of a pain, but we have to do it. Um, and we do your doctor's referrals every year and we handle that for you. You don't even have to worry about that. And we try to reach out to the new residents. I know when I call them and introduce myself and let them know what we're here for, they're like, oh, I can't, I can't deal with that right now. I'm moving in. But we try to get everybody going. So, and then we also provide you with an orientation and just, you know, how we go about business in the fitness center and how to use the equipment and where everything is, where the pool cords are, first aid kit, all that stuff. So we like to try to touch one-on-one -on -one when you first move in. Um, and of course, this is the fitness center and we have really great equipment now. Yes, we have two treadmills, two new steps, an arm cycle, um, nice side um, life fitness equipment, a lot, um, leg press, chest press, seated row. So it's just, we don't have the biggest gym in the whole wide world, but we have everything you need. You don't need to go anywhere else. <laughs> and we have, of course, our beautiful pool. 
And we had a great class today. I was so happy to see at least 10 people in my aqua class. We had a little pool party. So we try to make that fun. Um, you don't have to bring anything. We have towels. We have noodles. We have weights. All you have to do is show up. And you haven't heard it lately, but with um, summer coming and a lot of thunderstorms and lightning, we have a um, ThorGuard lightning prediction system on top of Actually, I think it's on top of, it's on the roof. I don't know exactly where. But if there's a lightning storm in the area, you're going to hear a loud horn. So if you're in the pool or around the pool and you hear that, you need to take cover. There's also a beacon flashing light. So after the horn goes off and that light will still flash, when it's all clear, you'll have three horns. So it's much like um, the system that you have at a golf course. So as summer approaches and the rainy season approaches, you'll be hearing a lot of that for your safety. And of course, we have a lot going on with wee bowling, corn toss, wellness challenges. We do a lot of presentations on nutrition. We like to, I like to um, collaborate with other departments because we just recently did something with occupational health. So I like to... Um, use our professionals because they know it better than I do. So we bring in the physical therapist to talk. We have our registered dietitian here that can do wonderful uh, presentations, um, heart health. So we, we, we try to provide you with education about health and wellness. So it's not just go to the gym, work out. It's the full scope of wellness. And we just recently, how many did the Wisdom Warrior Challenge here? Was it, did you have a good time? Was it fun? So that's something brand new we did this year. I was just kind of looking around on social media and I came across this and I thought, you know what? We have a lot of competitive people here. So we're doing this and we had such a blast and we're gonna do it again next year. And everybody that participated is like revved up and want to start training harder now. And um, I bet we're gonna double the amount of people next year. So that was really a lot of fun. And then I think I brought this up uh, last time. Does anybody know where the wellness desk is? You know where it is now, right? Okay. So that's where, if you see um, things in the um, newsletter and all that about, you know, oh, sign up at the wellness desk. Oh, where is that? It's by the gym. And I hope you know where the gym is. So that is actually the current board because this is our big program that we have coming up tomorrow. But that is the wellness board. Every month I change it up with whatever's going on, what's coming up. Plus a lot of interesting articles um, on balance, on exercise, on nutrition. So there's always a lot of information there. Like I just said, the wellness desk is full of a lot of information. Group exercise schedules. And you can also see everything that's going on. Um, on Care Merge, the weekly, the Clubhouse Lobby, I have that easel, flyers everywhere. I try to post around the mailboxes. I'm trying to make sure that you know what we're doing. And so upcoming event tomorrow, we have Pump It for Parkinson's. So this is, it's World Parkinson's Day tomorrow. This is an event. This is the second time we've done this. This is a NIFS program but it's open to a lot of senior living communities. And this year they have last count was 243 communities nationwide in Canada and actually in Hawaii as well. So continent and then Canada and Hawaii. Um, it's to um, educate people on Parkinson's disease and how, benef how exercise benefits when you have this um, condition. So it's gonna be all day long tomorrow. In the lobby, the new steps will be out there. We're going to have raffle prizes. We're going to have balloons and food. <laughs> food that begins with the letter P. Pineapple, papaya, you know, pomegranate, pink lady. I'm not doing pizza. Pink lady apples, pigs in a blanket. <laughs> So that's tomorrow. Now at the wellness desk, there are sign-up sheets because everybody's signing up for 15 minutes on the new step. And we're trying to get 60,000 steps tomorrow. Okay. We're trying to get 
10 million steps throughout the country tomorrow to represent the 10 million people that have Parkinson's disease. So time slots are still available. Let's go. Um, and this is just to kind of look at last year. There's Sean. <laughs> There's Jeannie. So that was last year, and um, it's going to be even better this year. And then May, we have a big event, National Senior Health and Fitness Day. That's going to be on Wednesday, May 29th. So just kind of start putting that on your radar. Um, we're going to have a health fair. We have games. We play with staff and residents play together. Um, food, raffle prizes. We will have a party the different day, probably the next day or the following week, because last year, everybody was tired. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, they kept saying, we're exhausted. We can't even dance. Can you do it on a different day? So we will. But it's a really fun day. It's a great day. And that's it. That's all. Thank you for your time. Do you have anybody have any questions? Or we're good? OK, great. Job, Thank you. Thank you. Where's my thing? Oh, I left it up there. So often, um, so oftentimes I get the question of what differentiates an LCS community from another community, and NIFS is one of those best practices. Not all LCS communities, like a managed LCS community, may not participate in NIFS. But because we are what you call an, an equity-owned community, it is the expectation of our owners that we will partner with NIFS. Because as you can tell, not only Jane does a wonderful job, but NIFS as, as a wellness organization provides us with a lot of access to a lot of great things. So uh, it's, a, it's, it's considered the best practice when you have NIFS in your community. With that, I had a little birdie in my ear, Jane Coots, over here saying, are you going to announce the new residents? We have a lot of new residents here. And um, I, as I looked out over the audience, I don't want to say I see a lot of old residents, <laughs> but I do see um, only just a handful of, of new residents. And I, Jim Brown, I think we introduced you last month. Two times. Well, third time's a charm, my friend. And then we have Mr. and Mrs. Malish next to Jim. And then we have Mr. Uh, Shroff. Shroff? Um, your wife blew me off last month, too. I don't know where, what she's doing on these Wednesday afternoons. But um, anyways, that must be the Gardens North section right there. So am I missing anyone? So we have Jim Brown, Mr. and Mrs. Malish, and then Mr. Schroth here. And then we have Louise, uh, who's on the Captain's Club, who comes every month. And we thank you for joining us. And Mrs. Gray, I saw Molly in the uh, Warrior, the Wisdom Warrior Challenge. So we tell her we expect to see her next year as well participate, all right? All right. So... I wanted to, how many of you participate in the LCS sounding board? By raise of hand, yeah, raising your hands. Okay, so we have, we have a handful of um, individuals. So LCS has a division uh, that is considered market research and analytics. So what they do is they, LCS develops communities, right? So it's in their best interest to understand what the consumer wants in a new community or an existing community. So I think it was in 2020 or 21, they started the sounding board. And I think it came from, it was really born out of COVID, actually, I think. Um, and Meryl's shaking his head and Mr. Hall, you're shaking your head. So I'm thinking that I'm right on that. But the sounding board is it's a really cool uh, platform where LCS can um, collect data and information. So it's comprised of over 700 independent living residents across the LCS uh, nationwide communities. So 
throughout the entire United States, we have about 700 residents living in our communities that participate in the sounding board. So, and the coordination is uh, conducted by Lauren. Uh, she's a market research analyst. And I remember when it was first starting, I remember, um, Meryl, you having some conversation with uh, Jana when it was in the infancy stages. But the sounding board is really cool. Um, so in this particular sounding board, it was diversity and inclusion. How many of you participated in that? Okay. What I thought was interesting on this particular one is, is that now we have 700 participants, but only 389 actually participated in, in, in this particular questionnaire. So 389 um, sounding board panelists in 31 communities. And the key findings, I must be talking too much because my mouth is really dry. So the key findings, there were several key findings. And oftentimes, when we think about diversity and inclusion, what do we think about? We think about the color of our skin, right? Because that's sort of what we were raised with and, and so forth. But there are so many other aspects to diversity and inclusion. And one of the things that I, I, I really like about LCS is, is they too have established a corporate culture of diversity and inclusion to the point where they give us a floating holiday for diversity and inclusion. So this sounding board, it's, it's, it, it, this is really where the rubber hits the road because they're extending this out to, um, out to the residents. So we're gonna just quickly run through the key findings. So nearly three quarters of the respondents say that diversity and inclusion in their community is important to them. So 75% of those 389 participants said that diversity and inclusion was, and I remember, a couple of months ago when we were expecting um, a couple relocating from California and it was, they, they were our first African-American couple and everyone was, you know, anticipating. I knew that they would be welcomed. Um, unfortunately, Mrs. Edwards has passed and Mr. Edwards has elected to move out um, and move uh, with his family in Port St. Lucie. And so as I was chatting with him, he assured me that he felt very welcome, uh, very welcomed here. So that was, uh, you know, delightful to, to hear. Um, half of respondents believe that their resident population is diverse, with six out of 10 respondents believing that residents are representative of seniors in the surrounding area. So, so what does that mean? Of the 389 people that participated, only 50% of those individuals feel like their resident population is diverse. It's kind of, it's kind of interesting, right? So only 50%. I feel a sense of belonging in my community. So people responded nine out of 10 here. So this is, this is really uh, important and, and, and good. All residents are treated equally in my community, eight out of 10. I'd like to know a little bit more about that because I, I mean, you know, that's like, that's like bordering a C or a B, right? If you're in school, I mean, it's like right at that. So uh, anything under a B is not, is not good, but um, I, I think that's, uh, I think that's kind of interesting. Differences are welcomed, valued um, in my community, seven out of 10. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, that's very interesting. I've experienced instances of exclusion or discrimination. Only one out of 10 respondents have experienced. Is one out of 10 good? Is it? No, right? We, we want everyone to feel included. So programming, are you aware of any diversity and inclusion initiatives and programs uh, 
training, learning opportunities at your community. As I was preparing for this presentation, it, I, really, it, I really started thinking. And the respondents, 33 of them said yes, 47 of them said no. And I started thinking about us here at Sand Hill Cove and what kind of programs do we have that highlight the diversity um, and, and create more of an inclusive environment. Do you feel like we have any specific? Yeah, I agree. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it kind of begs the question of what, what do we do, right? And I don't have that answer right now, <laughs> but you're gonna help me with it. Um, so of those individuals, that responded, yes, they were aware of various programs. They defined or, or they stated that there's a formal, a formal organization was created to address inclusion concerns and programs. Uh, recently, a program was presented to help attendees identify their individual prejudices. There is a resident group made of people with differing sexual orientations that meet regularly to discuss the issues. And I think, you know, we're seeing that all, all across the United States as well. And then we have an ongoing series of different religions of the world presented by members of that faith, which I thought was really interesting. Um, recently at one of our marketing events, somebody came up to me and they asked me if we had a chaplain or if we had a pastor. And I said, no, you know, we don't. Um, typically, you will see that in a nonprofit organization, not in a you know, a for-profit organization um, that's not, you know, tied to a, a particular religion or not. But I thought that was an interesting question that that uh, individual asked me. So these are just some of the some of the items that the people who responded positively to this said that they have experienced in their community. So get your wheels turning. So what topics related to diversity and inclusion would you have um, interest in learning more about? Now, these are the respondents who are responding, right? I'd like to know, know more about the cultural backgrounds and viewpoints of our staff members, but I know it would probably be difficult for them to share of themselves for fear of how it might possibly affect their employee. Employment. <laughs> Somebody said, enough education, let's see some action. Let's have more diversity workshops that aren't just black and white. Let's celebrate more ethnic and religious holidays, even if it's just by informational brochures, ethnic foods, minor decorations, and speakers. And then the transgender, new sexuality labels, all that is going on since birth gender is no longer binding, my grandkids try to explain it, but I just can't get my head around it. You know, I'm going to be 53 next month, and it's difficult for me to get to wrap my head around it. And I've had some conversations with residents um, that live here who've, whose grandchildren are also going through that as well. So I thought that one kind of resonated with me. Um, and then un unintended biases and how to correct them. So these are some of the items that the respondents said that they thought that you know they would like to learn more about and maybe there's something that you would like to learn more about. So there'll be more discussion on this, uh, but I just thought that the sounding board was, was uh, very insightful. And so overall, uh, how would you grade your community in terms of diversity and inclusion and of course, the respondents uh, were largely um, B. So how would you rate Sand Hill Cove on diversity and inclusion? A, B, F, C, C? Yeah, there's, I think, you know, overall we're very kind and we're very tolerant of, of, of one another, but there's, there's probably still a lot of opportunity to, to be a bit, you know, you're probably not gonna like this, but 
the uh, the diversity, as I said earlier, it doesn't just it's just not color and religion. It it could be even the fact that somebody is using a walker or a scooter, and how are we including those individuals? Right? It doesn't have to be an ethnic group or or religion. So just just and how are we? Yeah, right. Mary, Mother Mary's over here saying, and how are we judging, right? So that is another element uh, to inclusion and just diversity. So, yeah. That's one of the things that I liked about the Orient Challenge was it was all inclusive. Walkers were invited. You could use a walker, you could use a cane, you could use a wheelchair. So it was all inclusive. It wasn't just you have to walk on your own or run on your own you could use your device. And I think that made a huge difference with being, everybody was included. Good, good. So um, one of the things that I'm gonna do a better job at is, is these sounding boards, I, I think they're doing these, are they doing these monthly now? Because every other month or every quarter. So what I'm gonna try and do is, is as we get the results, I'm gonna bring them here and then we'll review them with our leadership team. And, and maybe if something resonates with us, maybe we can work with the council or the, or the committee to see, hey, how can we? So, so with this, um, obviously there will, will be more, more discussion around this, but are there any comments or thoughts or feelings, um, any reactions, any of you who participated and um, who participated in the sounding board that maybe you want to share your experience? Well, I thought one of the positive things that we do here is that we offer transportation to two different faiths every week. But I have wondered if there is another group that is, I mean, more than two, but that way I guess they could use the concierge car. Except concierge cars don't work on weekends, do they? I don't know. They, okay. they don't, but I mean, that brings up a good, I mean, if you're working on diversity and inclusion, yes, I mean, it's going to force you to look at, you know, maybe having to do things differently. But that would be my first thought, is that maybe there's a third, um, whether you call it religion, but a religious group that would like transportation because they don't drive or they don't want to go into Stewart yeah. or something. That would be my only thing at yeah. this time. That's a good point. Anyone else? Oh boy, I shut you down on this, didn't I? <laughs> All right. Okay, so moving on. So I'm gonna just review with you some community updates. I think I did something wrong, Audra. Okay. So um, I'll just share with you a couple of updates. Um, so Shauna, uh, Mary's, I, I hate to use the word replacement. I know, right? What, what word could I use instead of replacement? F successor, thank you, thank you. So Mary's um, successor, Shauna, did start this week. She's actually training in Texas, we have a, region, a regional um, health services division. So she's there training this week um, on some, some things. She'll be here full time on, Mon uh, on May 1st uh, with, with Mary. Um, the other thing is, is if you would like to eat outside, I ha at lunchtime today, I, I had uh, somebody else in my ear uh, sharing, uh, you know, the, the way things used to be and so forth. And I thought, you know what? So I just need to remind everyone that if you want to come over and you want to eat lunch, you can either place a to-go order, we'll box it up for you, and you can come over here and eat, or you can sit outside over uh, by the waterfront dining room. We, we, will, we will definitely accommodate that. So just know that that's also an option, especially for our new folks um, in the room. Um, comfort menu, there's been some discussion about the comfort menu. How many of you know that we have 
a comfort menu. Ooh, look around. Oh, awesome. And I even see some new people raising your hands that you know about the comfort menu. So that's great. So the comfort menu really is designed for those individuals who are not feeling well. Maybe they're just returning from the hospital or just getting out of water's edge and you know, just not feeling well. That needs to be coordinated. Accessing that needs to be coordinated with Mary um, and and then um, and then you would place your order and, and food and beverage would prepare it for you. So this is just a nice, one of those nice things I think we were talking about in the healthcare committee that kind of had risen again. And, and so we just wanna keep it in front of everyone. Uh, moving on to landscaping, I've been seeing some improvements with Brightview being back, would you agree? Yes, I, I mean, I mean, they're they're so overzealous that at 7:55 in the morning they're out blowing the leaves, and you know I'm getting phone calls and emails from residents saying quiet them down. So uh, sorry about that, but I I feel like how many of you attended the landscape committee meeting uh, this month? Okay. Folks, this is your opportunity to, to participate in the resident committee meeting. So we had a presentation at the landscape committee, right, by Brightview. And they what they did is, is that they projected a map of Sand Hill Cove and how they will move around the community each week and where they will focus. It was a color-coded map. So um, I, I feel like they have a very logical way about them. Um, and and I, I just, I wasn't there, but I, I heard that it was a really, really good. Um, it's Phyllis, um, I put in the weekly last Friday that Phyllis will be out until further uh, notification. She, we are hoping that she will get clearance to come back tomorrow. We really don't know. Um, she'll let us, she'll let us know, but if she can she goes to the doctor tomorrow and she'll either come back on Friday or, or next week or when her doctor clears her um, to return. I've also heard some rumors around the community with um, some of you who've emailed me and noticed that my title changed. Um, well, that title changed about two and a half years ago. Um, <laughs> and I was updating my signature line um, to reflect the fifth year in a row LCS has won the JD Power and Associates, so I figured that I would update my uh, my title too. So for those of you who don't know, um, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. So I just wanted to squelch the rumors. That does not mean that I'm going to be leaving the community or be out of the community anymore. I'm I'm here. Uh, so I just wanted to. The afternoon committee meetings, um, so January 1st, we started a new afternoon schedule of the committee meetings. Um, we, are, we just completed our first quarter of those, and I will tell you that I'm, um, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that there aren't more people that want to come listen to the committees. So um, I am going to be talking to John, who will, will talk to the committee chairs, or the committee chairs can talk to their committees. The only two committees that I uh, really am going to be insistent that remain in the afternoon are finance committee and resident council. If the individual committees would like to change and go back to a morning, um, because there's just not the attendance is just not there. I'm going to leave that up to the committees to make that recommendation. John, I don't know, uh, you know, how you, yeah, yeah. Um, so send an email to you. Okay. So John is saying just have the committee chair send an email to John. The only thing that I will say is, is as we start moving committees around, a couple things. One is I would still like them to be held in here because I just feel like it's more conducive with the audience set and if more people want to come, they can. And then secondly, we just need to be cognizant of not disrupting the wellness program in the morning. Um, so 
those are my only two asks, I guess three asks with finance and resident council remaining in the afternoon. I, I really, uh, so John's question is, do you, you don't want the committees going into the cove? And I really don't want them going into the, going into the cove. I don't feel like that's conducive to future growth and, and of, of people attending the committees. Um, pardon me? Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to get a a call afterwards and say I couldn't hear the audience. <laughs> um I just this is landscaping and um so we have been meeting in the pavilion. I find that it is a very good arrangement because the committee members are all in one area, one place, and then there's a place for guests. So there's a lot of good ways to communicate, and we even have microphones. Um, so it's, I would vote to be able to make sure that we do as much as we can to keep them here in the pavilion. Sure. And just so you know, I didn't just willy-nilly change this. On the, resident, um, on the resident satisfaction survey, this was really in response to the way the resident council was rated and just trying to create more of a communicative area. Um, so, but I'm going to, I'm going to leave it up to the committees, um, you know, to, to figure it out with, to figure it out with John and within the parameters that I've just um, outlined. Any other comments or questions on that? No? Okay. Um, just a couple of other things. So I've, I've had a couple of requests. Uh, apparently there are several people getting ready to leave for the summer. So before you leave, we wanna celebrate both Debbie, uh, our accounting director who's retiring after 26 years. I was gonna say 29, I had Suzanne on the brain. Uh, after 26 years and then Mary, of course, um, 31. So we're gonna try and do something the last week of April, I just need to, to pull that together so those individuals who are leaving for the summer can also be a part of that, so be on the lookout. Um, earlier this year, I talked about establishing a new resident orientation program, and that was before Mary provided me with her resignation. So I need to wait until Shauna gets on board, and then we'll pick that initiative back up and and you know, work with uh, a group of residents to help us um, solidify that, that program. Um, and then I wanna ask you this, because um, in the resident satisfaction survey, there were comments made about activities and activities not being intellectually stimulating. So, um, we have like we have like three minutes. I have three minutes, so I, I just I want to ask the group, what does intellectually stimulating mean? As Mr. Cowell is falling asleep, he's not feeling so stimulated right now. <laughs> so obviously, a cup of Joe is not intellectually stimulating. But anyone want to share? We're surrounded by colleges and universities. We don't bring in speakers, and yes, thankfully, Stephen Cowell has given several very good ones. But when you've been awake, <laughs> well, he's always awake when he's speaking. But but I think that we could we could tap some of the others, and maybe Shauna. I'm surprised that. I mean, yes, these things she has advertised to us, but you have to go to those universities or campuses. I would think that we could get at least one speaker a quarter to come in and speak to us here. Um, let's. Good. There's a lot to be talked about mm -hmm. besides what affects us within these walls. Right. I I totally agree. Um, and you know, this is of course being recorded, so we'll have 
I think with bringing Shauna back too, and then her knowledge that she has worked on at IRSC, she may be able to help us, you know, do something more along those lines. Any, I, yes, I was looking to you and hoping that you would see the eye connection. Uh, with technology, things could be mainstreamed. Could or, be streamed. Right, to hear. That's yeah. another possibility. Yeah, it certainly adds another element of opportunity, right? And speaking of technology, I think classes on how to use your computer or your, your iPhone would be very interesting to many people. Okay. I know we, uh, John is, uh, has a class at Photo Club here where we're learning how to do photos with the iPhones, but there's so many things that are available to people. And so many people that said, gee, I just don't know how to do that. Yeah. Right. So did everyone hear that? Who would take a class on iPhone or iPad or computer? Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Other, other, yes. Not the Android people. Not the, <laughs> not the Android people. Are you saying Android is easier to use? No. What other, just, and we're just, I'm just kind of encouraging the, the conversation and the thought on this. Like AI, I think would be a... AI, AI. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, Jane. Okay. Jane, how did everyone hear Jane? Um, for those of you at home who did not hear Jane, so Jane Coots just said, a while ago, it was the third Thursday, and there every once a month, uh, different groups would come in, a dance troupe, but oftentimes it would be a speaker. Um, and so, J Jane, do you know when that stopped? Oh, that was a long time ago then. I, it was, yeah, because I'm, I'm here going on eight years, and I don't ever remember that. But, but. I think that's a good it, that's a good thing to think about. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Is your your time to give me some uh, some ideas? I think it's all well and good that the residents step up and do some of these things, but it really shouldn't be our responsibility. That's mm -hmm. just my personal thoughts on it. Mm -hmm. But it should come out of um, Phyllis's department, mm -hmm. that office. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not the. It's not the residents' responsibility, but part of feeling like you're, you, you're, you, you're still, you know, engaged, right? Right. Right. But people like to present, so I think there's a balance of if somebody wants to present and. But I, I do take what you're saying. I mean, it really does need to come out of life enrichment. So. Thanks. I think great decisions is an opportunity, a great opportunity for all of us. But we have to kind of dig hard to get people, individuals. And I think something should be established with a stipend, and it would be through Phyllis's office. OK, good, I think gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Anything else? All right. I think that's it. Any, does anyone have any questions, closing comments? Brett, do you want to come close us out?
Do you have your notes? So everyone, I'd like to introduce you to Brett Landy. He is Debbie's successor. I almost said replacer, replacement. So Brett, welcome. Well, thank, thanks, Sean. I would like to... I would like to thank Sean and the leadership team here for giving me the opportunity. I am so glad to be here. Um, born and raised in Richmond, Virginia. Um, came down to Florida four years ago, part-time, kind of back and forth. And last summer it was uh, full-time. So uh, I'm really enjoying the sunshine. Um, it's a great weather down here. So I haven't gotten tired of it yet. Um, like to also give a shout out to Miss Kennedy over here. Uh, she's been here for a long time. So just thank you for your patience during this training period. And I am looking for my trip to Texas. I mean, I, I, people get to go to Texas when they start. That's great. So I, I'm looking forward to that too. So thank you, everyone. Thanks, Brett. All right. All right. Thank you, Brett. Um, and then Audra just reminded me, Jill didn't come in to give her marketing um, update. She's probably selling an apartment. Um, we, ha we have uh, four vacant apartments right now. We, we have seen quite a bit of attrition pop back up. So we have five, Debbie's saying five. So that's right, one just released today, right? Um, so Jill is uh, working to... to play the chess game and get people moved around. Um, I have no doubt uh, we do have five or six closings coming up in, in June. So uh, in, come June, you'll be looking uh, at some new neighbors. But uh, right now, uh, Jill is working to fill those vacant apartments. So um, any, any other questions? We're good. Have a good rest of your day, everyone. Thank you.